Welcome to episode 15 of the Audio Fundamentals course. Today, we're going to examine waves in the analog domain and the analog signal path. So waves in the analog domain. The advantages of using the analog domain over the acoustic domain is that you can send the waves to specific places. It's very hard to do this in the acoustic world. You'd have a whole bunch of strange acoustic treatments and channels and stuff. In the analog domain, speed is not an issue at all. You don't have to worry about the percussionists in the back of the orchestra having to play a little bit ahead of the beat in order to arrive at the audience's ears at the same time as the violins in the front of the orchestra. Size is not an issue. We don't need to worry about larger instruments that produce bass sounds and smaller instruments that produce treble sounds because we can just carry all of those sounds on the same size wires. Not only that, but once we've captured the sound into the analog domain and we have an electrical wave in the same shape as the acoustic wave, we can alter the shape of the electrical wave using electrical components and we can do lots of powerful things. So the question is, how do we get the sound wave converted into an electrical wave? The answer is transducers. These are the points between the acoustic and analog domains, and most but not all of them operate on the electromagnetic principle. So we'll look briefly at the construction of a speaker and the construction of a microphone, the two most common types of transducers used in audio. Any converter of one type of energy to another is called a transducer, but in the context of audio we're using the term to describe the bridges between one domain and another, namely speakers and microphones. For example, with a microphone, the sound wave turns into an electrical wave of almost the same shape. Speaker is just the reverse. This translation is not perfect. There are always going to be slight changes. The types of speakers and microphones that we'll look at today operate on the electromagnetic principle, which is that whenever electricity flows down a wire, a little bit of magnetism is produced. And if you have more wire and more electricity, that makes more magnetism. Now the most common way to pack a whole bunch of wire into a small space is to make a coil, and we usually call this an electromagnet. So whenever you run electricity through an electromagnet, it becomes magnetic, and if you reverse the polarity, the plus and minus, of the electricity, it becomes magnetic in the opposite polarity. The north and south poles are reversed. We can use this to make a speaker. Here's a simplified diagram of how a speaker is constructed. First we have a permanent magnet, and for convenience, instead of labeling the poles north and south, I've labeled them minus and plus to correspond with the electricity. Then we have this, which is an electromagnet connected to a paper cone. Now we send alternating current through the electromagnet, which flips the side of it that faces the permanent magnet between plus and minus. This means that as the analog wave dips above and below zero to plus and minus, the speaker pushes out and pulls back to create an acoustic wave of low and high pressure in roughly the same shape. Magnets! How do they work? Let's say that this right here is your permanent magnet inside the speaker. Then this will represent our speaker coil. Lovely. So we've got magnet with paper, well, masking tape wrapped around it. Now, when these are attached together, when they get close, right now they're the same polarity facing each other, and this magnet repels this one. But, when the electricity is flipped around in its polarity as the wave goes down below the zero point, then this electromagnet, which remember this is controlled by electricity, it actually attracts that magnet to it and pulls the speaker coil inward. So you can imagine that with the electromagnetic flipping this around back and forth and back and forth, the speaker coil itself is going to move back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and create the sound wave in roughly the same shape as the analog electrical wave. Now, many microphones work the exact same way as a speaker, except in reverse, because the electromagnetic principle works both ways. A dynamic mic is the type of mic that's the same as a speaker, and the way that works is the sound waves hit a tiny diaphragm attached to a coil of wire, they move it back and forth over a magnet, it creates an analog wave making electricity go positive and negative in the same shape. So using our similar diagram, this is the way a dynamic microphone works. Again, you've got a permanent magnet, and here you have an electromagnet and a thin diaphragm, 
And as sound waves come in to move the diaphragm, the electromagnetic moves around the magnet and a very low voltage AC current is produced. A dynamic microphone is electrically and mechanically almost exactly the same thing as a speaker. And it does work both ways. If you have an old microphone that you don't mind damaging to do this, you can actually wire it so that it receives an analog signal, like this. Let's take a look at the signal path that you use in the analog domain. There's four principles that you'd want to be aware of whenever you're setting up an analog system. Number one, the audio signal travels through an actual physical path. Number two, the signal path advances only in one direction. Number three, you need to match the level or amplitude appropriately for each stage. And number four, the signal always comes out of outputs and goes into inputs. Let's look at these in detail. First of all, a physical path. That means that you have actual wires for each pathway that the audio signal is going to take. If you don't have a wire taking you from one place to another, the audio can't go that way. The second principle is that the analog signal path is one way only. For example, in a typical simple live sound setup, you would have a mic and a mixer, an amplifier, and a speaker, like this. Now the microphone takes sound from the acoustic world and outputs it into the mixer. The mixer goes into the power amplifier and the power amplifier goes into the speaker. One way only. Now if you've ever experimented with this, connecting a mic directly to a passive speaker like the one in the picture doesn't work. And the reason why is the next principle, level matching. Analog waves have to be amplified to the right amplitude for the next stage in the process. And there are three main categories of signal levels that we're dealing with in the analog domain. The first of these is mic level. This is a very low voltage signal, extremely low level. You usually run that into a preamplifier, such as the one built into a mixer, which then outputs a somewhat stronger signal, line level. This is still low voltage and not dangerous to handle. We run line level into a power amplifier, and the power amplifier outputs speaker level. Speaker level signals are closer to the AC mains current that you would find in your house, and they are dangerous. So signals at the wrong level won't work right, and if they're much higher than they're supposed to be for that equipment, they can even cause damage, electric shock, injury, death, all that sort of thing. You don't want to mess around with speaker level signals any more than you do with high voltage AC current, because that's what it is. Principle four is that analog devices have inputs and outputs. And I knew one guy who referred to them as gazintas and gazautas. Signals enter a device through the inputs. He'd say that uh, this microphone goes into the mixer and they exit a device from the outputs. And he'd say it goes out of the mixer into the power amp and it all just works out. So we've seen the analog domain in a nutshell. Acoustic sound enters the microphone, which puts out a mic level signal and goes into the preamplifier on a mixer. The mixer outputs a line level signal and goes into a power amplifier. The power amplifier outputs a speaker level signal, which goes into a speaker, which causes sound to occur in the acoustic domain once again. And that's the analog domain in a nutshell. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please post them in the comments on the video. Go ahead and subscribe, add this to your favorites. You can even add a letter U to the word favorite if you like. And please share this with your friends. If you know people who are into audio, I would love it if you can send this their way. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.